Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Course in Miracles 365, Awakening to Love. I'm Reverend Tomas, and thank you all for tuning in. For all of the recent subscribers, I really appreciate your interest in this material in A Course in Miracles. And above all, what I appreciate is your interest in spirituality and your own walk, your own path. That is said in many spiritual circles to be the highest form of offering that you can make, higher than money, higher than assisting a human teacher, higher than subscribing to the teacher's YouTube channel, right? which is really nice, of course, but it's your own practice that is considered to be the highest form of offering. And that is offering not just to yourself, but to every single living thing. Yeah, that's the best form of offering you can make. Why? Because the more we practice, and here in the thought system of A Course in Miracles, the more we forgive the more people we reach, the more love we extend. It's a beautiful thing, and it's what we're here to do. So I thank you for that. Today here in this series of videos, we're looking at question two, part two here of the clarification of terms. Now, if you're not familiar with where this is, the clarification of terms section follows the manual for teachers in sequence. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to start at page one of the text if you're new to this course. In fact, you may choose to begin on a completely different section, such as this clarification of terms or the workbook or the manual for teachers. What's beautiful about this material is that it is a self study curriculum. So that means what it sounds like. You take what you wish to take, choose to take at a given time. <laughs> yes, just like that. So here we're looking at a couple of definitions, some clarification of terms. And today we're looking at the ego and the miracle. Now, let's be real clear about the terminology here, the ego, the miracle, shall we? There is one ego, just as there's one son of God. Now, of the two of those, only one is real. Guess which one that is that's real. We'll talk about what the ego is, and we'll talk about what it is not. And we'll also look at the miracle, which is a very wonderful, it's a very loving and a very interesting idea as it's, as it's put into practice, as it's portrayed here in A Course in Miracles. And this is something that attracts a lot of people to this course. It's, it's just even the title of it, A Course in Miracles, it does, it calls in a lot of people, do they stay when they find out what's involved? Well, <laughs> I hope so, but that's up to you. Remember, it's a self-study curriculum. Let's talk about the ego first. What is it? It's nothing. It's a mistake. That's it. That's all. It is nothing. Shall we elaborate on that? Let's do. The ego is this false sense of self that appears to be who we are in the world. In fact, we've identified with it, which is why we see ourselves as an individual. It's why we assign ourselves a collection of sounds that we call a name and attach tremendous significance to that. Not saying anything is wrong with that. That's the way that this world operates. And we are operating here 
apparently in this world so you know normalcy is is always good but let's think about what's really behind it we attach tremendous significance to our own collection of sounds a name and we believe that we're individuals we attempt in so many ways to distinguish ourselves from other apparent individuals and we see ourselves as cut off and separate competing for what appear to be scarce resources like money and food and water and political power which when you think about it is just about as illusory an idea as you could come up with what is that anyway I invite you to think about that as I invite you to think about all of this. Oh, yeah. And while you're at it, it would be very cool of you to question the foundations of everything you now believe. That's what Jesus wants us to do. We're encouraged to do that, studying this course. So the ego is this sense of separation, that we're cut off, we're competing with everyone else. We're separate from them, indeed. And we identify with this. We call that ego. And it's not my ego, by the way. <laughs> That's a very ego thought, isn't it? Me, mine, my, my ego. No, there's one ego. It's a mistake. And there's one son of God, the thought of God, the extension of God, the creation of God. It's us me, you, your worst political enemy. It's who we are. We're told here in the clarification of terms that illusions will not last. They won't. They can't last. They're impermanent. Everything in this world is impermanent. It's one of the central teachings of Buddhism and other, other forms of world spirituality. Everything is impermanent. Is not this thing impermanent? Oh yeah, it is. Everything, nothing lasts in this world. Illusions don't last. Including this illusion, okay? We're told right up front, illusions do not last. The ego is an illusion. Now, this may take several repetitions of reading the material, of watching this video, of contemplating and thinking about this for yourself. It may take several repetitions involving what might be a tremendous period of time, but that doesn't matter we're instructed to repeat things. This is why the Course essentially says the same thing. Like any spiritual text, like any spiritual practice, it's essentially saying the same thing over and over again in different ways, or it's saying them in the exact same way on a different day, but because you're in a different state of mind or a different state of readiness to hear the teaching, you experience it completely differently. It's like watching a movie over and over again. You see different things, different things appear to you. And you could swear that they were never there the first time or the last time that you saw the movie, but they were. Same thing with The Course in Miracles. It's like reading your favorite novel over and over again. It's analogous to that because you notice different things. I have had the experience myself many, many times of going through, back through a segment of this course and having this really interesting experience of thinking, wow, I don't remember that ever being there in the first place. Yet, of course it was. I just didn't notice it then, and now I am. The study of any spiritual practice is a lot like that. 
So what is the ego? Well, it's nothing. There is no separation of any kind. It's nothingness. So the ego itself wants you to involve yourself in a huge, hardcore distraction, such as wondering, when did the separation occur? How did it come about that we appear to be here floating around in this thing that's 80% water, identifying with it, defining and defending personal territory and generally making ourselves miserable, nervous racks? I know, isn't that, isn't that a pretty picture? <laughs> How'd that happen? Well, it didn't. Let's contemplate that. It did not. There is no separation of any kind. There has never been any separation of any kind. The Son of God is one. We're awakening to that. But the more I or any teacher repeats it, the more you'll hear it. Yes, on purpose. We're doing this for a reason. We're doing it for a reason. It's helpful, and Jesus offers us some very, very helpful words here. It's helpful to look at the ego and define it by what it's not, actually. This is helpful. What is it? Well, it's nothing. What is it not? Well, the opposite of the ego in every way is the miracle. This is a course in miracles. The miracle is the opposite of the ego in every way. And the analogy that Jesus uses here that's very helpful is light and dark. I like to think of it as the miracle is light, the ego dark. When you turn on a light in a dark room, what happens to the darkness? It's no longer there. It's past. The light is now. This is important. The darkness is past. The light is now. This is reinforced in the several paragraphs of commentary that were offered here in the clarification of terms. The miracle is light. Now, people get attracted to A Course in Miracles because it contains the word miracles. So what exactly is a miracle? Well, it's not necessarily levitation of the physical body or objects. It's really not necessarily Yoda or Luke Skywalker moving a spaceship, a very heavy spaceship, or rocks or boulders or Jedi mind tricks, anything like that. It's not necessarily that. It's not necessarily physically healing the sick, although we could take a look at these feeds and rightly call them miraculous, a miracle is a whole lot more accessible than that, and you are a miracle worker. I insist. We all are miracle workers. It is not something that's inaccessible. Why? Because a miracle is any shift from the thought system of the ego to the thought system of the Holy Spirit. Let's characterize that differently, if this is helpful. Any shift from fear to love. Any shift from darkness to light. Any shift from the ego and illusion and suffering to God, joy, happiness. Any shift, no matter how small it may appear, any shift. How does it operate? Well, the miracle forgives, the ego damns, it condemns. 
it's separation, which means us and them, me and you. And of course, we're opposed in the ego's thought system. Yet, in truth, we have no opponent. There's oneness, one. You'll notice that one does not equal eight billion, does it? It's one. Don't expect, of course, if, especially if you're just starting out, <laughs> I mean, don't expect the ego to just jump on board with this. This cancels its very seeming existence, which has never been anyway. Expect resistance on the path. It's the ego attempting to preserve itself. It's no thing. It's nothing. And it attempts in all kinds of ways, subtle and not so subtle, to get you to continue to identify yourself as an individual, as a member of a certain political party, for example, a certain gender, yeah, a certain ethnic group, yeah, a citizen of a certain nation state, all the subdivisions and classifications and categorizations that characterize our world, which are, are pretty endless aren't they, when we think about it. When we identify with those in any way, that is the domain of the ego. The miracle cancels it. Any shift, any shift from dark to light, from fear to love, any shift at all, no matter how small, or insignificant it may appear at the time. It's still a miracle. One of the most famous lines of A Course in Miracles is from early on in the text. There is no order of difficulty in miracles. This means that they're all the same. There is one miracle. It's analogous to a light that cancels the dark. It doesn't punch it in the face. It doesn't kick fear in the face. That makes fear real. That makes an opponent out of it. So if you have one of those t-shirts or bumper stickers and it works for you and you find that you, when you see it or when you adhere to that idea that it gives you some courage, great. You have no opponents. You have no opponents. Fear is simply canceled. The miracle is the light that cancels the darkness. It just disappears in the presence of the light. The light doesn't have to punch it in the face. It doesn't have to kick it in the face. It doesn't have to knock it out. There aren't any teeth splattered all over the ground. No one has to have a bloody nose or a black eye or a broken jaw. It's not like that. What happens when you walk into a dark room, flip on the light, switch, darkness, gone, past, not existent. Darkness, past, non-existent. Again, darkness, past, non-existent. And you, my friend, are a miracle worker. Yes, you are. Do not tell yourself otherwise. Or if you do, whatever, I can't stop you. But watch this again and understand that you are a miracle worker. What is a miracle? It's the light. Any shift from dark to light. Any shift, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem at the time. Thank you, as always, for joining me. And how do you work miracles? How do you extend love? Forgive, forgiveness. Even if you only start by wishing someone good morning and smiling at them. Is that not a shift from dark to light? Just as much as moving a mountain? I say it is. Oh, and Jesus agrees. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in.